Hi guys and welcome back to Scale Mortar. And today we're just going to be focusing on finishing up our Trumpeter 125th 1964 Ford Futura. Um, the main focus of this video is just getting the body on, routing the wires, and uh, I'm finishing up, really. So here's where we left it last time. Uh, the paint came out pretty well. I'm quite happy with the result. We did get a few dust spots, but that's not too much of a problem. We're going to try and sand those out. But the first thing we're going to do is come in with the Tamiya panel line accent colour. And we're just going to go through all the panel lines. Just so we can kind of break up the panels and add a bit of visual interest. We're going to be coming on quite thick with this. Because the panel lines are quite deep. And we want to get it uh, we want to get it quite dark. And um, so we're just going to kind of pull it in there and let the capillary action pull the the wash through. Um, doesn't matter if we kind of miss, uh, as you can see I done there, we're just going to come in with a cotton bud, we can come in now while it's still wet and just wipe away any major excess and if once you're done there's uh, still too much you can come in with a cotton bud with some um, enamel thinners like the fluid or white spirits, mineral spirits, um, whatever you normally use to kind of Thin or pull away your uh, enamel paints. Next up, we had a silver uh, piece of trim, I suppose. As you can see, I've already done one side and we're going to be using an edding marker. I've moved away from the pilot marker. I found that this is um, it's much better. It kind of it doesn't really bleed out as much as the pilot pen. Um, so yeah, um, this was recommended by Paul over at ISM, and um, I've used it for quite a few things now, and it is really really good. So all we're doing here is just using the the very tip of the pen coming in at a bit of an angle because it seems to go down nicer that way um, just making sure that any excess is off the tip and what we're going to do is we're just going to very gently um, just touch that kind of raised detail um, this raised detail is in a recess um, so it is quite easy to slip off and get some paint on the sides of the car but with this type of pen, it's not a problem because much like the parallel uh, pilot pens, they um, the ink can be removed with uh, enamel thinner or mineral spirits or lighter fluid. So if you do miss, the technique I used was I actually used mineral spirits and um, just dipped in a, a wet wipe, wrapped it around my fingertip, pulled it tight. And then just used my fingernail um, to just kind of push the uh, the wet wipe into the little kind of panel line or recess which was under and above this raised detail and it just pulled away any kind of bleed or any excess um, you don't have to use this method you can use the Tamiya pointed cotton buds they're really great for removing small bits of paint um, and getting into these little recesses. However, just be careful because it is obviously it's better to not have to fix a mistake. So um, the the more careful you are, the less likely you'll have to spend that extra time fixing any mistakes. And next up we're just going to be coming in again with our panel liner and we're just going to we're going to load it up pretty thick on the tip of the brush here and we're just going to kind of 
run it along the edges of the recess that our raised detail sits in and then we'll kind of like gravity pull it down into the recess um, and then later on we'll come back with a cotton bud with some uh, with some thinners or mineral spirits just to remove any excess uh, you can see up the back end of the car there I did miss a bit with the uh, the silver pen um, again that's not a problem uh, because it can be wiped off um, I just decided to try the panel liner first because the panel liner can pull up the the paint from these paint pens I'm not sure if it is an enamel paint in the paint pens but it kind of acts the same so um, I thought I'd try the panel liner first and if it, uh, it does pull that paint away from where it's not supposed to be that's great when we come in later with our cotton bud or um, our fingernail and uh, uh, the wet wipe that will kind of remove most of it anyway so uh, that's the method we went with and uh, it worked it worked really really well Okay, and next up, we're just doing some detail painting. We're using the LP11 uh, from Tamiya. Uh, this is just silver. And as you can see, my camera didn't capture it, but we, we previously painted up the um, windscreen surround. And now we're just going through all the kind of outside pieces. So this is the, uh, the side mirrors. Um, we also painted up the, um, the windshield wipers. And we got our, uh, our aerial for the radio done too. Um, this is unthin straight out of the pot, and I'm literally just uh, just dipping the brush in the lid, just so we don't get too much paint on on our brush, and then uh, paint the the part. Uh, try not to go over the same area more than once because it. it with the lack of paints, it can kind of pull the paint away, and then you have to wait for it to dry and, and go over it again. Um, however, the time you lack of paints do brush paint really, really well. Something I also did was for the front of the mirrors, uh, sorry, the back, the front, I, I don't know, the reflective part, which you're all going to look at while sitting in the car, I used the Edding um, silver paint pen uh, just so I could get a higher shine than the silver. Um, rather than kind of go down the route of uh, stripping off all the chrome and um, painting it up with black base and then getting the owl clad out, I just I thought I'd use the pen and it didn't turn out bad at all. So next up. I've printed out some American style license plates. Um, I was going to use decal paper and make it a decal, however I've only got one sheet of decal paper and I didn't want to waste it um, on pretty much one decal. So I've used um, high gloss photo paper um, and uh, I'm just going to I've printed quite a few off just because they didn't didn't really know what size I was going to go for. Some are too big. Um, I'd done it really quick. I just copy and pasted them into Photoshop and resized them rather than messing about with measuring and and getting them to the right scale and everything. I just popped them in and just uh, made a couple of different ones in a couple of different sizes. And this one was the one that stood out, and this was the the right size. Um, and we're just going to test fit it into the the license plate recess now and uh, it looks really good yeah that's the, that's the right size so we're just gonna pop that off and now for our rear lights now we've got three up the back um, so they're gonna be our obviously our rear lights and we have one for the license plate light so all we're doing is we're just feeding the wires through the holes 
um, I drilled a little hole in the bottom part which is going to be covered by the bumper just for our, our LED to slide through and then I drilled two holes where the pretty much where the lenses would sit on our rear grille just again so we could get our, our LEDs through and this was just a simple case of sliding them through the holes and pulling them uh, pull them as far out as they could go and then we can slide the body on and um, once we come to actually mount in the lights we can just push the wires back in through the holes so just making sure that the kind of square holes we've made in these grills take the light um, I have needed to um, slightly open up the holes there apologies I'm out of frame like I mentioned in the last video this is a new camera mount and there's a couple of things I've I've got to get used to and that's just kind of making sure my hands are in frame and something which you may notice is every now and again you can see my head uh, I've just got to try and keep that out of shot because it does block things every now and again but uh, at the lights we used our five second fix UV curing uh, resin pen and we just pop the light into the little square hole we made put a bit of the five second fix on the back and then hit it with the UV light um, for five seconds um, I normally go a little bit more just to make sure and then I go to the other side if I'm if I'm doing it through a hole again just to make sure uh, that it that it has set because once or twice uh, the light did pop out of place because maybe I was speeding along a little too fast The tape on the front is, is just there just to keep the bonnet from flapping open and closed and open and closed um, while I'm kind of flipping and turning because I'd hate to catch it uh, because the only way to, to put it back on is to take the body off again and flip it over and then re-glue it um, and I didn't want to break the mounts or anything or the hinges so I thought I'd just tape it down just to make sure it doesn't, uh, doesn't fly around the bench. And getting the body on was um, was not that easy and not because there wasn't really any room under there because of all the wiring the problem was the, the wires kind of coming up the side due to the shape of the body shell it kind of curves in at the bottom to put it on you need to pull out slightly um, now the issue with doing that is I lined it up first and then pulled out and as I was pulling out it was quite hard not to catch any wires and pull them with it so there were wires poking out here and there um, but that's not too much of a problem because before we fully seat the body you can see we're just coming in with the tweezers and just making sure everything's tucked under and, uh, and hidden. making sure the battery is in and there you can see these many wires um, there were a total coming up the left hand side there were a total of 10 wires I believe yeah 10 wires and coming up the right hand side just four but again it was a little bit of a nightmare um, but it did all fit and with just a little bit of fiddling and pushing and pulling the wires like this everything was in and hidden Okay, now it just comes to um, lining up the, the rear lights. Um, so the body shell, like I said, 
was a bit of a tight fit so we needed to do a little fiddling and finessing but we uh, we got that in the end um, and now you can see I've glued my lights in place and it's just a case of posting those wires back through the holes um, we could have pulled from the other side but then there would have been more wires flopping about the inside to try and poke in and keep in this way I thought well it's closed so <laughs> They're not really going to poke out if I do it this way. The wires were, I don't want, they weren't strong, but they were, they had a little bit of rigidity to them. So they did kind of poke out um, a little bit. See, when I was leaving go, they were, kind of looked like they were jumping back out. But with, uh, with a bit of patience, we got there in the end. So next we moved on to the lights at the front. Uh, we're just adding the lights to the front bumper here and it's the same we done for the rear grill. Um, just pop the LED in our square shaped hole we cut previously. Pop a bit of the 5 second fix on the back and then hit it with our UV light uh, both from the front and from the back just to make sure that it has set. Uh, now I'm just test fit in just to make sure that with the wires in the position they are in the bumper still fits and the locating points are not obscured in any way and then we're just going to turn the light on to check if there's any light bleed um, there was a tiny tiny bit um, so what we've done is we've um, we're going to get our Tamiya flat black XF1 here and we're just going to paint over the back of our of our LED and just on the inside of that chrome part a lot of the times the chrome is um, it the chrome plating is adhered to a kind of very very slightly see-through plastic um, so it can sometimes if there's any wear on the chrome it, the light can bleed through so all we're doing is uh, is just filling in those areas with a bit of paint just to stop that light bleeding through um, and this video is featuring my head again I've got to get used to the new um, position of the camera maybe not lean in too much um, it wasn't really necessary um, I mean I could have picked the part up uh, um, but yeah, I'll just need to, uh, to keep an eye on that in future. Okay, and what we've done here is to simulate the actual lens of the of the lights we've just popped some of that five second fix in the hole at the front and uh, then used our UV light to cure that up and then we came in later on with um, some clear orange now I didn't have clear orange I'd run out so I used Tamiya clear red and clear yellow um, just dropped a little bit of the red into the clear yellow and mixed it up and we got a nice orange color and then I just painted over the front of the lenses Now I'm just taping down the front bumper because it was sliding about when I was trying to add this second LED um, and I only have two hands, a third would be lovely but for now tape will have to do um, again we're just doing the same as the other side just making sure that that, uh, that square LED is in our square hole and then coming in with our UV uh, 5 second fix It was a bit fiddly and there were probably many better ways I could have uh, I could have routed these wires and uh, and added them but in the end it all came together and uh, 
that's the main thing. Another quick tip is just try not to stare directly at the UV light when you are setting your resin because if you keep doing that over and over again your eyes will start to hurt. Well at least mine did. Um, I don't know if I'm just sensitive to UV light. Um, but yeah just, just look away. <laughs> just get your aim and then look away uh, just in case. That's why I am shielding it with my hand there because my eyes are starting to hurt at this point. And again, all we're doing here is creating that lens like we did on the left hand side earlier on with our with our um, UV resin. Okay, and now we're gonna be adding the lenses um, and we're using just Hobbycraft Tacky Glue. Um, this glue is, is really good for various, various things. Um, I most recently used it to put together some paint racks uh, because it is pretty much, wood glue is pretty much just PVA and this is pretty much just PVA. Um, good thing is it dries clear. Um, so we're gonna be using it to glue in our lenses for our front and rear lights. Um, I've already test fitted. and We're just gonna pop a, a bit of the glue into the recess just over the LED. Um, like I said, it dries clear, so we shouldn't have any issues there. And then we're just gonna grab it with our tweezers and pop it in place. Just give it a little push, just to make sure that the glue is touching both this and the, the back. sorry the back of the the kind of light surround and then we're just going to jump in and do the same on the other side i did go over our leds on the back with a little bit of clear red um just because they are quite bright and the kind of red without the clear red painted over the top the red from just the lenses was washed out a little just because of the brightness of the leds so the clear red did help kind of uh um, saturate the red a little bit more and that we just test in there's no kind of light bleed and here's our license plate it is a personalized nice license plate um, it's meant to say scale motor uh, which is me just in case you didn't know um, but again we're just gonna fix this on with a bit of a uh, bit of PVA just put a tiny little blob on and then uh, we'll stick our our photo paper license plate on top you just want to PVA is a good working time it takes a little bit of a little bit of time to dry so um, we're just popping it on and lining it up and when it's all lined up we'll just leave that to dry just try not to touch it while we go on to different parts uh, we've done exactly the same as we did for the rear on the front lenses now there's a pattern on the front lenses which um, if you've seen kind of car headlights you you'll be aware of um and i believe this is for uh the beam pattern um i'm not sure uh, i don't know if that is for the the beam pattern or if that is for giving strength to the glass but um it looks cool nonetheless and just make sure you get it the right way around Now, because I was quite eager to finish um, all this handling, which you may see on the sides, did end up smudging our silver lines, which was really annoying because that was the part which um, which annoyed me the most. I had one or two attempts at it, um, and then I had to. Uh, once I was done, the very last thing I done was redo those silver lines. So just be careful. Um, gloves may have helped. Um, just like I used gloves while putting together the the fire blade in the last video 
um, and just because I didn't want to smudge anything or leave any fingerprints but the paint on this had been drying longer um, than the the CBR so I wasn't worried about fingerprints and I just didn't really think about the silver up the side um, but yeah um, we had to redo that right to the end and now we just add in our kind of final bits on um, so these are the windscreen wipers they they, they they do have to go in a specific side um, so just keep an eye on the manual and the manual will uh, will call out what goes where as you can see I did have to swap them round we're just test fitting them here and then we're gonna glue them in with our uh, Rocket Rapid CA Gel. I have to say that one slowly because I do struggle with that one sometimes. Yeah, the, the fit wasn't great there, maybe because of all the paint on both parts, which is why I, I always say test fit. Um, I did end up having to shave off a little bit from the uh, the connecting point for the that left windscreen wiper. Uh, left from our view, right if you're in the car. Um, and now we're just adding the bonnet, uh, the hood emblem, shall we say. This again, this was done with the um, the Edin chrome pen, just because I wanted a nice chrome finish. But I didn't really want to get my airbrush and everything out just for one tiny part like this. And it does leave a nice, believable finish in uh, in scale. And again, we just used that tacky glue from Hobbycraft to fix it down. Just because I wanted to kind of... It's a bit of insurance. Um, knowing me, I probably would have put a blob of su uh, super glue on the front there. And then accidentally touched it. And then ended up picking the model up and leaving super glue fingerprints everywhere. So I thought I'd go with this because if... Um, if there is any kind of excess which we need to get rid of, it'll clean up easy with uh, with water while it's still wet. And now we have the wing mirrors. Now the locating points on the wing mirrors were um, they seemed a little big, um, so I just chopped that down with um, my side cutters, and I done the same for the other side. Uh, it seems a bit of a theme uh, with the kit, like the fit wasn't the greatest, I, I did have to modify a few pieces and um, it always seemed that either the holes weren't big or deep enough or <clears throat> pardon me, or the, the kind of locating points on the part were too big, um, which was the case with these wing mirrors, um, but I suppose you could say the holes weren't deep enough um it's six or one half a dozen of the other really just it was just easier to modify these parts than it was to drill bigger holes in our painted body and last but not least we are just going to pop in our antenna just giving it a test fit um and just because it was a recessed hole i was confident enough to use some ca glue for that um, just grab it without tweezers, pop it in, give it a push, make sure it's seated, and uh, and there we are. You can see the air filter just on the right there. Um, I did pop that in. Um, I just wanted to wait for kind of all the extremities to uh, to dry. And again, we used some tacky glue for this, and this is just a CD because we did add a CD player. Because, um, like I said, I wanted to be a loved, looked after car, but used. So we've added the um, CD player and this is just a half CD that's just going to be just popping out of our CD player and we put that photo etched CD on on the, uh, the front seat too. Now these, uh, the CD player was from Mr. Model, I got that from Hero Boy, much like the uh, magazine covers. I got a few bits and bobs. Um, the Mr. Model 
uh, things. They are actually really, really good. They've got some quite varied things which you may not see in other places. But there we are. That's uh, that is our model. That's our tissue box, which just covers our switch. And um, yeah, I'm absolutely chuffed with how this came out. Um, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it, and I didn't think it turned out as well as it did. To be honest, um, I was worried about the light then, um, and then you can see our dashboard lights up and everything. Um, yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I'm just gonna throw up a couple of pictures now, just um, of the finished model. But if you've enjoyed watching this, then please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Next up, I I'm gonna be building another bike, so stick around for that. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and stay safe.